All right, so let me get some potatoes planted in this box here. And uh, that's why I left it low. So I'm gonna put some topsoil in, put some potatoes in, and then uh, make sure they're covered with topsoil. And then I can build up the soil as uh, the potatoes start growing. And so let's get to it. So I bought these at uh, Tractor Supply, uh, $2.49 a bag, although this last time I went down they went up to $2.79, so it was pretty cheap. Uh, I don't have enough of my own compost, which I'm going to make this year, and uh, hopefully I won't have to buy any more of that kind of stuff. So. Like we're still filming <laughs> the wind blew this thing down so which I'll cut and you probably won't even know <laughs> we'll find out I guess these things are about three quarters of a cubic foot so I don't know I didn't do the math I seemed like a good price but I didn't really do the math to see if it is price-wise per cubic foot so it is what it is sometimes you just get what you can get and move on Oh, I usually put down three bags per square. That's two. I was gonna leave it at that and then put more on top, but I think I might go ahead and put down the three for now. And uh, so it's not sitting right on top of the the goat manure compost. The goat manure won't burn it, but uh, I don't know. There's a lot of straw, or not straw, but hay mixed in, and that's gonna compost. So. I don't know, that could burn it, maybe, I don't, but I don't think so, we'll see. Okay, so it's first week of August and you can't find seed potatoes anywhere because the season's almost over for most people. So I just went to the store and bought organic potatoes of the type that I want. And uh, you can see some of them are already starting to get little eyes on them. Uh, they can't put an organic label on them legally anyways. If they're irradiated or, or chemically treated, you know, to stop them from growing. So, uh, you know, I suppose it's possible that people, that, they, that some uh, companies do it anyways, but the chances are, are a lot less likely that they have. So, so that's what we're doing. And uh, I like the red potatoes and the golden, uh, sometimes they're called golden Yukons. I'm not sure if that's the same species, but I like both of these types of potatoes for homegrown potatoes. And when they're homegrown, they taste so much better than when you buy them. So, and these are little baby bags. Baby gold potatoes and baby red potatoes. Red rose, sometimes they call them. I guess there's a few different species, but uh, these will be good for, for this year.
potatoes need to be covered by two or three inches of soil. So I'm just pressing them in there and then I'm going to put some more topsoil on top. Um, and I'll probably just kind of mound them up over each potato for now. And then at, once they uh, go to bloom then uh, and you start seeing potatoes being produced, that's when you, you build up the soil around them, which is why I left it low. So we go from there. Planting them close together is uh, when you start putting more dirt in there when they start uh, producing potatoes, the, the mounds that I put in there will hold the dirt around it better as it goes up, as it builds up. And so once they start flowering and producing potatoes, uh, you can raise the dirt up and they'll continue. Uh, I've raised them in boxes before that were two and a half feet high box fills up with potatoes but you got the, the key is is I did it once before and didn't hardly get any potatoes and the key is is that uh, you have to wait till they start flowering and producing potatoes before you start adding dirt okay so here's the beds with the, all the topsoil in Spread out and watering some of it down. Got the potatoes planted in the back there. We'll be planting these tomorrow and the next day. And uh, we'll be good to go for our winter garden. So, the cucumbers and the watermelons is doing good. The uh, squash and Swiss chard and the peppers are doing good. I know they look like they're struggling, but they were <laughs> a lot worse when I got them. They've greened up and they're starting to get some new leaves, getting some new flowers on the, the peppers. So another week or so, they should be looking a lot better. And a couple more weeks, they'll probably be starting to look like the cucumbers and the melons and stuff over here, at least in the squash will. So, Ready for winter gardens. So here's my first Terra Preta slash Hugo Culture slash biochar, bone, uh, brick and pottery, uh, little azomite, um, some uh, chicken brooder bedding, which was, which was, uh, pine wood chips you know that they pooped in so there's lots of thing and it's just exploding so it seems to be working basically you have cucumbers and watermelons in there and I think there's one uh, cantaloupe plant in there that made it cantaloupes don't like being transplanted so I think we put three in there or so and, they, and only one made it but uh, for the first two weeks, I wasn't sure. It looked like they weren't going to do too well. And then, boom, they exploded. And this is what we got. And we've been pulling uh, cucumbers off them like crazy. And we've got, uh, I don't know if you can see that, a watermelon there. And we got another one up here. And so I also have a, a greenhouse, makeshift greenhouse to put over this. That has an angled thing on the side and I have rocks on the side which you can see earlier on in the video and make putting this together but anyways uh, so far seems to be a success and, and it's been super hot I've been in the hundreds now for weeks and we're still doing good and uh, yeah every time you come out here I see cucumbers that I miss and there's one hanging right here I don't know if you can see that or not but I need to pick that so uh, 
So we shall see. And, you know, and there's a little compost in there. I think that, you know, I, I call it my everything but the kitchen sink. And so uh, we'll see. Um, hopefully these become living, what I call a living grow bed. So you don't have to keep adding stuff to them, except maybe a little bit of mulch or something on top to keep the keep weeds out depending on what you plant like here you don't need a whole lot of mulch even though this is mulched uh, once the uh, plants cover then you, you get very few weeds if at all so there we have it so far it's a success we'll see how it is in a year from now okay so here's the results of the first year of garden Super ultra everything but the kitchen sink garden beds. <laughs> Here's my blueberries. They're going heading into the fall. And so uh, they're the only ones I did a little bit different. I did the same kind of beds, but I added a lot of peat moss and um, pine bark to get the acidity up in them. So I got potatoes over here. We've got uh, parsnips, rutabagas, and heirloom radishes which are huge they're not your i don't know if you could see that or not but they're not your average radishes um some i think these are kohlrabi i'm not sure and actually those might be rutabagas here's the original one the original first uh grow bed and it's actually going into the fall now even so it still has a lot of flowers it's still getting cucumbers and there's a watermelon still on there but it's uh it's getting colder at night so i think that's uh, it's starting to die out but it did good although i got some new shoots for the watermelon plant so anyways here's the uh here's some onions some those are beets there's some red left uh, red leaf lettuce these are beets also uh, planted those first and so and here's the uh, these are all winter squash note to self put winter squash on the ground somewhere next year <laughs> way too big for the thing this is uh, swiss chard we've got mustard greens in here we've got cilantro and um, romaine lettuce and some spinach uh, broccoli carrots so I planted this stuff all way late, and so uh, I'm going to have to put some greenhouse covers on some of these boxes to, to uh, like for the carrots to make it, probably the potatoes, and these beets probably are going to have to have it. Um, I got, uh, I have cauliflower and broccoli over here, and this, these small plants are asparagus, and in the corners, these little things are all uh, garlic. That I put in the corner we got peppers here we got about four different kinds of peppers uh, these uh these long ones are called banana peppers they're hot like a like about a jalapeno I guess there's some kind of a hybrid and then I've got red peppers and and uh, green bell peppers um, I'm gonna try and cover those too because they're they're starting to come in good now and so uh, definitely the potatoes are gonna need to get covered because they haven't flowered yet we're approaching end of September and we usually get usually gets cold here sometime in October and it could be in you know early October middle or the towards the end doesn't you know who knows when especially nowadays with the way the weather's been so anyways there it is let me uh, back up and get a shot oh well and here's the here's a shot of uh, have some peas and some beans in there and then uh, um, blackberries and raspberries and also some uh, zucchinis we actually pulled a zucchini uh, we got zucchinis coming out our ears so anyways thought I'd take a short video show everybody how they came out and uh, they should be bombing next year I'll rearrange a few things plant things a little bit differently but uh, we'll see how it goes hello friends I just wanted to make a short uh, clip at the end of this video to uh, let you know that um, I'm heading into the the uh, growing season this year. That was kind of the end of last year, and we'll see if we need to put in, up any amendments, and so I'll probably do a follow-up on this too. And I also wanted to add that I got uh, vegetables clear into the winter, 
you know, I had carrots and kohlrabi and beets and potatoes and everything. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get any pictures with my uh, greenhouse covers on them. I'll get a few of those. I'm going to put some on pretty soon, actually, so I can grow some starts and get things uh, started. But uh, So I just wanted to uh, give you that follow-up. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and uh, let me know what I can improve on. All right, so thanks for watching. Uh, be sure and uh, like and subscribe and share with your friends, anybody you think might be interested. I'm going to be doing a lot more different stuff on the farm. Uh, we raise uh, livestock here too and uh, I want to do a, a video on how to save a lot of money on on buying meat. If you can't raise your own there's a there's a way to buy it a lot cheaper and uh, better quality meat than you'll get in the store. So anyways alright uh, see you guys soon.